I call this meeting of the Northeast Independent School District to order. Let the record show that a quorum of board members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551, and the time is 531. Item 2, open session. A, discussion regarding filling board vacancy in single member district 2. We have some individuals who have signed up to speak to this agenda item. At this time, the board will receive comments from those individuals who signed up to speak to the specific agenda item. Speakers will be called up to speak in the order in which they appear on the sign-in sheet and to the item that they signed up to speak to. Speakers should limit their comments to the specific agenda item for which they signed up. Please remember that this is a business meeting of the board. Any person or group engaging in outbursts of any kind causing a disruption to the meeting will be warned, and if they persist, will be removed from the meeting. This is to ensure that all speakers have an opportunity to make comments without interruption and that the board members are able to pay full attention to speakers without any distractions. Ms. Huey. Number one. Good evening, I'm Richard Aguilada. Was ordained in the Episcopal Church in 1986 and now retired. Grew up in San Antonio, attended San Antonio schools and now live in the Northeast School District. Uh, District 7 is where I reside. And I'm here to speak regarding the vacancy uh, caused sadly by the passing of Ms. Terry Williams. Uh, I've heard a little bit about what's happening in, in Northeast School District and what I'm comes to mind is that I have nephews and nieces who all graduated from MacArthur, Madison, Lee, and the Northeast School District is, as much of the country is in San Antonio, is predominantly black and Hispanic. My hope is for you as a board to continue that representation, and as you consider the applicants to replace Ms. Williams, that you consider a person of color. That would be appropriate because if you are a person of color, you can identify with an immigrant family, with the diversity found socioeconomically and racially in this school district. And it seems to me that this is an appropriate time. My, my sense is that your role as a school board is to let the teachers teach and let the students learn. Again, I do have some concerns about what has happened in the past and decisions made, not only here but other places. And my hope is that you will be about casting vision, caring for you know, the property and finances of this school district, and to collaborate with your superintendent, with the Northeast School District uh, staff, campus principals, teachers, and teams. That's what I would tell my board. That their roles were three C's, cast, care, and collaborate. And my hope is it'll do so. I'm aware that this is a was somewhat of a controversial issue recently, and I hope that it, that it, is, it is not. By the way, I'm a friend of Nan Burley Ritchie. We've known each other since 1972, which dates us. And um, I'm here again, mainly to speak about how it's important this decision we make will weigh not so much, not so much for you in the, in the short term, but for the long term, and for the well-being of this school district, for its common good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number two. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Klein and I'm just here tonight to speak also on the board appointment. Um, so twice now I believe the constituents have spoken um, first when 60% of them voted for an option other than uh, the late trustee Mrs. Williams and again when as I understand the only named public support that you have had are for myself and one other candidate specifically. <clears throat> I only trailed Ms. Williams by 75 votes in this race, and the other candidate uh, that, we're, that I'm speaking of trailed me by more than 450. I've been clear and consistent in my messaging, um, and the logical step would be to appoint me the temporary trustee until an election which deserves to be on the ballot in May. 
Uh, we need a moderate who can unite a board that is very clearly divided. Uh, we need to get to work on issues like legislative advocacy, increasing the basic allotment um, to get more funding into our schools. Uh, we need to take a look at vouchers. They're coming. Um, the board or this, the district is going to take a hit with our assessments with STAR and the adjusted assessment system. And so we need to make a compelling reason for people to keep their children in public school. Uh, we also need to push back against no strings attached ESAs. But we can't do that if we're not doing it together. And the first and foremost priority of this school district should be the safety and security of the students that are in it, not only from inside but outside of these districts, um, in these classrooms, the students, the things that I hear when I go out and talk to people about deaths being thrown and violence in the classroom. We need to advocate for the safety of our students and our teachers. Um, and then again, I also, or in, I think that I'm here standing um, running myself against an image that's been put out about me in the media, a media that has never had a comment or a word from me, um, that has created an image that's in your head that um, I'm a person that uh, I've never had a discussion with many of you, but I think you have an idea of me that is someone that I'm not. Um, I really do want to advance the goals of this district. I have the interests of the constituents and the taxpayers at heart. Um, I ran for this seat. I will run for it again. Um, and just because I may not look like my constituency, it does not mean that as a single mother, I do not identify with food insecurity, that I don't understand what it means to not be able to pay the bills, to uh, struggle with your children academically and in those different respects. Um, I would hope that that would not be any criteria by which you would fill this seat um, because I have a genuine care and concern for, for my neighbors, for the students in this district, and what happens to um, the taxpayers' dollars where they go because we spend too much money to have children that are not proficient in reading. Uh, we spend too much money to have teachers that are not safe in their classrooms. And we spend too much money um, you know, to not, to not just be the shining star of the school districts here in San Antonio. So um, thank you for your time. Number three. Thank you, board. My name is Nan Burley Ritchie, and I'm a citizen of Wincrest, Texas, and of Northeast Independent School District, single member District 2. And um, yes, I have applied for the vacancy, and you all know my qualifications. But I want to reemphasize what, what my friend Richard had stated um, about Terry Williams. And I'm glad to see that um, Terry Williams' husband is here, Mr. Clarence Williams, and other friends here that are very interested in the future of District 2 and Northeast Independent School District. I'll start. Um, Talking about the legacy of Terry, um, she was a very effective board member, uh, elected vice president. She was dedicated, hard worker, passionate about her work, the board, administrative staff, teachers, and most importantly, the students and their parents. Terry was an African American woman who represented the diversity of the student district's student population. The board of trustees voted for and requested interested persons to apply to fill Terry's position in District 2. Nine candidates applied, eight were interviewed. The board should take the next step and fill the vacancy with someone who embodies the characteristics and traits in order to fulfill Terry's legacy of service to the district. Requesting the public to apply for an appointment and then not making an appointment is not a good reflection upon the board. It is important to consider someone who is committed to performing the work to serve on the board who will support public schools, period. Prepare for the meetings, attend meetings and district activities, focus on policy not micromanage the superintendent and staff. Be thoughtful during the board deliberations. Be fair and nonpartisan in the board's decision-making process. Not to be beholden to any special interest group. 
Make the interests of students and parents a priority. Be accessible to the superintendent. Work collectively and cordially with the other board members and reflect the ethnic diversity of the district. Students need to see a diverse board. Men and women, different ethnicities. Students need to see a diverse board of men and women that are role models, who they can aspire to be someday. The African American community has worked hard over a number of years to be represented on the board and have an I'm active sorry, voice that's your time. in the district. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your time. Number four. My name is Tracy Shelton. It's good to see all of you. I live at 119 Sheila Drive. And I guess I'll start with ditto. So everyone who came up here before me said all the things that I believe, right? And I think that most of you believe as well, right? We are, it is important to us that we mirror our constituency. It is important to us that we advance the goals of the district. It is important to us that our teachers are safe. And it's really important to us that the district get on with the district's business. At the last meeting that I listened to, I think it was you, Ms. Landry, who talked about um, an unfair advantage that whoever would be appointed to the seat would have by sitting in the seat and then being able to run. And I think you're, I was listening, I was like, yeah, that makes sense, that's right. I had all these notes, but now I'm speaking off the cuff. Because I think about, as I think about that, you are right. And so I'd like to propose a way forward for you, because my guess is of the eight people that you heard from, there were at least two or three that you thought were phenomenal, and that would sit well with you on this board and help you make decisions to move, advance the mission of this district. Can we, and you can take it back into the closed session, but is there an opportunity or way to put somebody there that'll help us get our work done through May and then allow whoever those people are that are going to come and run for the seat to run? That takes out the unfair advantage that somebody would have, because whomever you, you appoint, right, if they're going to run, then they can say, I'm on the school board already, vote for me, reelect, incumbent. And so it, it does exactly what you said it would do. But is there an opportunity of those eight to put somebody in there who's not interested in this position as a long term so that you guys can move forward? Because it was clear to me, unless I read you wrong in the meeting, that we are, this board is clearly divided and is really struggling to come to, to see a way forward because one side is afraid that the other will get an advantage. And so I, I ask, I put that on your hearts and um, you know, I hope that you guys can really see a way forward because you did ask people to apply. You did ask people to come um, and put their information forward and to not make a decision and move forward, I think is a disservice for our community and our, our children and the board. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay, and that's everyone who has signed up to speak. So, um, Ms. Huey, you had requested this agenda item be put on the agenda for tonight. Um, Mr. Byer seconded it. So, would you like to speak to your thoughts about why? I, I think we heard a couple of things tonight. For me, the importance is giving a voice to this community. I think that, that as was pointed out, Mr. Halyard made a motion um, to, to start an interview process, and we haven't finished that. I think we made a great start. We had eight in, it, really great candidates that came forward, gave of their time to, to, to spend with us, and, and we took that time, too, to listen to them. Um, for me, I think it's important that we move, move forward as quickly as possible um, instead of um, uh, waiting until a November election, which is, of course, now off the table. But even then, for me, saving the money of an election and, and moving quickly was much more important. I want a voice in that community now. And, and um, Terry's irreplaceable, but I do feel that there's someone out there that could carry her vo voice forward for the community. So okay. pretty much it. Okay. I'm, um, I'm going to, I want to clear the air here. Um, 
First of all, I'm having some major trust issues. There's been a lot of things that have happened during this process that has caused me to just go, whoa, okay, this is ridiculous. Um, it wasn't, on September the 12th, there apparently was a, um, a meeting at Piper Bass where it's my understanding, um, Ms. Grona, that you claimed that we, the three of us, uh, Marsha Landry, Steve Hilliard, and myself, were the reason why we couldn't come to a consensus. I never said that, Ms. Villarreal. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping not, because this is, I kept Who hearing it from multiple, that? I was hearing from multiple, multiple people. It wasn't just one, it wasn't just two. At first I thought, I was sure that not. was never said. Okay, I then yeah. I apologize if that is not true. I just kept hearing it from multiple people, and they were calling me and letting me know that this is what happened. But I want to make it very clear that the reason why, in my personal situation, that seat, I loved Terry. I loved her deeply. I thought she was an amazing person, an amazing friend. However, that seat does not belong to Terry. It belongs to the people of the SMD2 uh, district. And I made, you know, I reached out to you, Ms. Grona, and I asked you, you know, for us to arrange a special meeting. And I said, look, this belongs, the voice of the people are being silenced. We were getting email after email after email asking us to either appoint Ms. Klein because they had already voted for her or just put it on the ballot. But yet we were stymied in every single way we could be. And I, I asked and then all of a sudden nobody was available. I gave out multiple times, let's do this. Look, it's the, the SMD to the people deserve their voice. Because let me tell you, it becomes taxation without representation. If we go in and just appoint somebody willy nilly, you know, and say, we know better than they, you know, than they do what they want, whether it be, you know, one of Terry's deep, you know, friends or whether it be Ms. Klein, the voters had the right to make that decision. Okay, well, let me back up to the August 21st board meeting that we had when we as a board had this discussion and we talked about what we were going to do. Um, it was a unanimous decision to go through the interview process. And um, in fact, we had talked about what that interview process was, where we did initial interviews, we would bring back candidates for a second interview. Um, Mr. Hilliard made the motion and you seconded it to go through that interview process. So that's what we were going through. Then all of a sudden, change course, show up at a meeting and say, that's not what I want to do anymore. Actually, we had never finished the interview. Actually, we did because when um, you killed it on that day, because I said, I actually came up, you can, you can look back on I the tapes, um, the interview process, because I said, fine, I make a motion to go ahead and place Jacqueline Klein in that seat. That's because, a different meeting. Um, it doesn't matter at this point because you everybody kept saying no, no, no. Um, this is a situation where we had the opportunity, and that is what's very upsetting. We had the opportunity to do the right thing. Yes, in the past, you guys may have just appointed people, but that's not the right thing to do. It's never the right thing to do to think that we have um, the ability to make decisions for people that are in a district, they have the right to make their own choices. And we had that opportunity and we were stymied in that. We could have had this uh, taken care of and anybody who was really serious about that seat could have been on that ballot on November the 4th. However, um, it was just decided that no, no, they don't, they can't do that. They can't do that. That's not, you know, that we're just going to just put somebody in there. No, it's not right. And so I just, I'm very disappointed. I'm really disappointed in all of this because I think we removed the voices of some really incredible people who were writing into us and they were telling us that they wanted us to do the, that election. And I think we owed it to them 
to give them that election. And I thought, okay, great. Um, Ms. Klein was on the ballot. So was um, the Rond. other. Oh, it, she was Ms. on Rond. there, and she was on there. They made the you know the effort to go out. Ms. Klein was the closest one to um, to Terry in as far as votes. So at least it gave that community the ability to say, yeah, well, she was on the ballot. We voted. We did this. At least it gave her that. And so that was the only reason why I said, great, let's go ahead and just put her in the seat because at least people voted for her. So when you agreed to go through the interview process and the appointment process, you were just only going to appoint Jackie Klein? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, and, yeah. But it, upon reflection, I started feeling a sense that it was not my decision to make. It but was the voters. Board it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm sorry. It was none of our decisions. This may be what you've done in the past. But and you this voted is what, to do that. But the thing is, this is what happened to my district when uh, over the shack appointments, where people were just put in places in my, my okay, community lost. So I understand. I understand, but it's the same thing. Okay. Does anybody else? Yes, so Madam what, President, I, I do have something, and I thought about this. And what we failed to do when we started this process was to put a very clear timeline. So if you can pass that down. I've typed out a what I propose for the appointment process in very clear steps with definitive timelines and numbers for us to consider. Because we can sit here and go back and forth. We are where we are. There's not going to be a special election. I put this very clearly so that we can do it's a clear process from start until we finish with an appointment. And I'll read it out loud. Step one. Before we go back here, we'll each put a name of one of the applicants and our name on it. In closed session, Ms. Huey will read the names out loud. The two finalists, we will call back for a second interview. Um, if there's some sort of tie that needs to be done, we can do that. Um, then we're going to do, we should do a QA and a in open session. If they want to sit in that seat, they should be able to stay out here like we do for the candidate forums. It needs to be an open session. Each trustee can ask three questions of their choosing, focused on the interviews we did, any statements that those individuals made to the media after the process began, and obviously their application and associated school board business. Obviously, it'll be tailored to the individuals depending on who the applicants are. Then by Wednesday of this week, Mrs. Grona will reach out to each of the candidates and see if they are available. I put the 3rd and 4th of October because I know several people are going to TASB this week and we won't be able to do it this week, but to keep it moving along, which would be the middle of next week. We will have that interview assuming we have the ability to have all the trustees and the applicants uh, finalists show up. And then during that, we at the end of that meeting, we'll have an agenda item with possible action so that at the end of that second interview, hopefully next week, we can do this. Each candidate will get approximately two minutes to answer each of the different questions. And then there can be short follow-ups of 30 seconds so that sometimes you, we, somebody else may have a follow-up to kind of get clarity. And then we'll make sure that's fair by alternating. Trustee one will ask, Candidate one, candidate two, trustee two will ask two, then one, and back and forth so that it is equal um, in the process. And then it's fair, it's transparent, everybody's out here um, getting to see it, and then the individuals that are the finalists will um, have their chance to um, you know, share their information and their perspective on the questions that we ask related to, once again, school board business and stuff we heard in the interview the first time. And I think it's a very clean process and it gets all the way to fulfillment with definitive timelines. I think that um, the process will be we will adjourn into executive session to um, talk about the I was actually thinking about having two people having each trustee could say who their top two people are and then deter somehow determining what the top people are from that um, I think that I mean does somebody else have any other thoughts or questions I do um, so it, I heard um, Miss Huey say that the interest is to fill the seat as quickly as possible and reduce the cost to the district um, I feel that we probably each have one person in mind 
and by putting two, we're extending that process and we're not doing a true democratic process of bringing the candidates to the vote if we're going to make a decision and we're going to be the only voters, um, we should narrow the decision down to the top two. Okay. And three, we can't do, three is not a democratic process, I guess. That's why I'm, 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 I'm more comfortable with if we each put two names down and then if we're able to, you know, get the um, well, ultimately, we have to come down to so, one person. Well, and, and I guess and what I was suggesting is if everybody puts two names down, then we could potentially call back the top two of those. And when you go to the ballot at the poll station to vote, do you get to pick two? No, but we're and that's not my point. doing a... We're not, and, we're and, not and, we, and we should. It should be one vote per trustee. So... Yeah, I, um, regardless, well, we'll get to that in a second, I guess, we're, since we're at the point, um, I just wanted, I did want to address one thing that um, a portion of single member district 2 actually has a representative on the board, which is myself. Um, I was elected by several precincts within that single member district 2, and I, my term is still up, and so I do feel that with with having some of that percentage of that group uh, electing me that I do have a voice in what happens in that district. My kids went to school in that district. I've got relationships in that district. And so um, I, I, I wanna make sure that it's clear that I'm, I'm, I'm still here for part of that, part of that community. It's not the whole community, but there's a pretty big overlap. And the, the, um, the number of votes that I received well exceeds what the total votes were for the 2022 election. So just for those precincts. Um, so they do have a voice and I, I think about that community often because I spent several years in that community with my kids in school there. Um, I'm, obviously it sounds like on the table we've got either an appointment or we wait until May. And I think, Mr. Hilliard, I think your process is, puts it to a, a specific letter, which I think is appropriate. Um, I think we can probably discuss the ins and outs of this, um, okay. if that makes sense. And just getting it now, it's going to take a second to digest it. Yeah, but but, but be clear, I don't think we can wait till May. I think by law we'd be breaking I, I, the law. No, oh, actually we wouldn't. We it it the the calendar runs out in 180 days, and then it just automatically gets pushed to the next election. So it's not. We're not breaking the law, and I get it. I, I, I don't okay. think we. No, I don't uh, think we can. Uh, make I, I did not understand that. Maybe yeah. I misunderstood yeah. that. Okay. And so, um, you know, we. I think it's all of our hope that we get somebody in yeah. this seat, but I think we also need to remember that, um, you know, while we are elected by our single member districts, we are here to represent and make decisions for the entire district. Mm -hmm. So we're not just making decisions for our own. So yes, I think. We all want to put somebody in that seat um, sooner rather than later, and that's why why we're here. So, any other discussion out here? Well, I, for one, think that um, his methodology is sound, and um, I like it. So, I like that. Because as Ms. Landry says, we only get one vote at the poll. At least we're all supposed to only have one vote at the poll. So um, I like this. Okay. I think before we go back there, we need to determine if we're gonna do two or three. I personally think two finalists would be appropriate. <clears throat> and then we can go from there. I don't think we need a third, my personal opinion. Um, but I think we should decide it before we go back there so we don't come out of here going, you're doing two, you're doing three, because yeah. we're discussing the process. I, I believe it should be two. I'd prefer to have three personally, just to give us some, um, some leeway with our, our, we just, we had two, we had, we had eight really great people came, come in here. So I think cutting it abruptly to two is, is much more difficult. Um, we've, we've heard from some of them tonight and they were wonderful. I. I would not want to put him on the spot, but I would love to hear what Mr. Thomas has to say too. But um, it, it, um, I think, 
I would have been more comfortable even coming back with four to interview, but I would I would be fine with three to interview. And, and if we settle on three, we settle on three, but again, I believe each person should have one vote and one vote alone. And so if Ms. Huey and- So, uh, well, I'll just say I, right now, I have two people and I don't know which of those two is my first choice because I'd like to bring them back to have more information. How about we do one vote at a time? We'll do the first round, see where the numbers are. If there's somebody that obviously is going to be it, great. Then we can go to the second, and then we can go possibly to the third. We keep this very clear, one vote at a time, till we have a very clear, where we just do one round each time and see if there's obvious in each round who it is. Is that reasonable? So the first time we'll all pick, we'll all write one name. If there's an obvious one in that group, okay. Second group, we'll write right down a second name. If there's an obvious person in that group, they become number two. Go to the third one. If there's an obvious one, great. And if there's not, then we'll have to work it out till we get to three, one at a time. Is everybody okay I with that? I think that makes sense. Okay. Are we um, going back into executive to discuss this procedure? Because, well, I, I mean, this go, is all really We're gonna go new back here. into executive to, yes, Okay. Say our name and write our name and do that. Okay. So we're now going to adjourn into executive session um, pursuant to government code section 551.074, deliberation regarding filling board vacancy in single member district two pursuant to government code, code section 551.074 and the time is 6.02. The board will now reconvene into open session and the time is 6.32. Item A, discussion and possible action regarding filling board vacancy in single member district two. Do I have a motion to bring back four applicants for a second interview early next week? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Item five, adjournment, and the time is 6.33. Thank you all for being here.